This week in Nerf, we've got community everything from parts to complete blasters. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. 7 a.m. Pacific, bright and early every single week. Now, we're back from Ragnar Oktoberfest. I'm excited to be here with all of you and talk about some news again, so let's get right on into it. And like I said, this is a community-focused episode. So let's go ahead and start with Roboman. Now, you may know Roboman from his long shot parts, the bolt sled, uh, the bolt with the carbon fiber and all of that good stuff. Now, he's done some great things and he decided to step into the flywheel realm for a small batch of Raven flywheel cages. The are, these are aluminum flywheel cages for the Raven, which does not get the same amount of love that something like the Strife does. So this is something that I'm sure Raven lovers will be very excited about. Uh, now, this is a 41.75 millimeter crush, which is... Uh, not something we see a ton of in terms of crush rate, so that's interesting in and of its own right. Uh, the spacing in there should be suitable for wheels up to 38 millimeters, which is nice. These are going to be powder coated, laser engraved, and serialized for all people that purchase them. They are running for $75 to $85, depending on what powder coating you want. And I, I, having your own custom uh, Raven flywheel cage that's powder coated, I think it has up to six different color options for it. That's just cool. I, I'm looking forward to what they're gonna do in the future for other parts as they have posted, they're going to do some polls to see what other people want to do because they're going to be focusing on small batch production and do cycles of them. So this first batch of Raven flywheel cages is sold out but they are going to do a second batch run, I believe, before they move on forward, which is why we're talking about this. So if you want to try and get one of those, you certainly can. Uh, like I said, I think this is awesome. The quality that Roboman puts out is just phenomenal. So um, I'm hoping he does something for a blaster that I would like to purchase something from because I'm not a big fan of the Raven, but it'll a lot of people are, which is what makes this awesome. And I would personally really enjoy having a powder coated flywheel cage in a nice fabulous color, of course. Uh, but this is just something that I think is so cool and look forward to seeing what he produces next. So definitely go check that out down below if you wanna see the listing for that and be kind of aware of when those things go up. I've got the Facebook link down there as well. Next thing I wanna talk about is something that popped up on Reddit, and this is from an undead dude. This is a belt-fed Thunderhawk. This is something that's just plain fun. I mean, it's one of those things that uh, he actually, in his post on Reddit, said someone asked if I could, so I did. And it, it's something that I thoroughly thought was entertaining and worth sharing, and it's just kind of that creativity and, and drive that the Nerf community has to try things just for the sake of trying them. And this is a great case for it. I'm curious now how long they can make this belt and have it still function. So I'm sure this is not the last we'll see of this. They did post the Thingiverse files up there as well for people to use. So if you have a Thunderhawk that you wanna mess around with, go right ahead. Here's an option for you. And I think that's well worth sharing, especially on a kind of community highlight day, because this isn't something that every person is gonna want, but it's something that's fun and unique and interesting that's worth seeing, that's worth knowing that that's an idea that you can put in the back of your head for later in case something comes down the road that you think, oh, this could use a belt of some kind. Oh, what if we try to use that design from un uh, uh, an undead man or an undead dude and kind of change it for this application? So it's just kind of that continued line of creation that we see in the Nerf hobby that I really, really enjoy and how people will continue projects moving forward or take things and iterate on them to make them their own. Uh, which actually brings us, I believe, perfectly to the next thing I wanna talk about, which is the ABR2 from Cuboid. This is an updated uh, remix of the ABR from, let's see if I get this, Ensu Zalgiz which uh, was posted a little while back, and this version takes the pusher system that originally was designed by Kuriaka and replaces it with a solenoid pusher. Now, this is something that we've actually seen used at some of our local BTA events, as well as uh, Ragnar Oktoberfest last weekend saw it get heavy use over the entire course of the weekend. It seemed to do very well. So this is a functional 
usable blaster that's fully ready for people to print and uh, and try out for themselves. Now it does have a little bit of a uh, kind of P90 aesthetic, so I would heavily advise not printing it in realistic looking colors unless you're going to be playing on a closed field or private property or that kind of thing, but it looks cool. There's no doubt about that. And it performs well, which is awesome. I love seeing community made things that do perform well. And the solenoid kind of realm is starting to get pushed more and more uh, for pushers here in the community. We've seen it with uh, the Flywheel of the World is posting some solenoid pictures as well for some of their builds. And we're seeing kind of just integrated more and more people trying to find uh, ways to use them in proper use and, and the best results with them. So that's something that I think is cool. We're exploring new tech, trying new things. The community is pushing things forward again, as it always does, because our community is awesome, plain and simple. Um, so again, this is another blaster, a full-fledged blaster that if you want to go try it out and you've got a 3D printer, you can go for it. I I'm getting to the point where I'm actually starting to consider do, should I just get a 3D printer myself? Because there's so many designs, so many things that I want to try out that I'm starting to have to heavily consider to be able to keep up with things. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a tangent, but regardless, I just love seeing things push forward continually and uh, the hobby will never stop growing and never stop pushing things forward. And I love that. So continue to do so everyone that's trying things out. Uh, something else to talk about today is uh, a rainbow pistol that was posted up on Facebook. This is from Will Mears. This is not your average rainbow pistol. This is a rainbow pistol that has been altered to use sledge fire shells. And that to me is just fantastic. I love sledge fire shells. I think they're awesome. I want more of them and I want to have something that can use them well and put a good amount of oomph behind them to use them on the field. And this to me was just fun. It's just something cool that, you know, why not? We see plenty of rainbow pistols. We, we mentioned one with the body kit uh, last week on the longer episode. And why not try something a little bit different with one? Now, they are going to adapt it, it seems, and try and make it a little more modular, I guess, to have different... Uh, front ends that'll fit on it kind of we see plenty of people with their pistols they'll they'll do uh, like absolver rounds and stuff like that so i'm guessing probably more along those lines though i personally personally really like the sledge fire version and i would i would be very tempted to try and pick one up if that were the case if they were easy to, to produce or get my hands on but just something to share because it's cool it's fun it's something a little bit different and i love uh, kind of the, the theme for today is things I love seeing, I guess, because I just love seeing these things iterated on and tinkered upon and, and, and adapted and adopted into different versions. So that's something that this is another take on that. So definitely go check that out. And uh, if you want to follow along with them, I'm sure they'll post more in the future as they continue to mess around with their design and get it to a final product. Uh, quick one more thing, since we talked about the, uh, the pigeon last week on the episode and how the files have released, I wanted to just briefly mention it again. The name has changed from the dessert pigeon to just the pigeon. A uh, shorter name, I guess there were some, uh, confusion on the way to pronounce it. Hopefully I was pronouncing it right. I don't even know, to be honest, but they did, uh, release a assembly guide, an overview and all the files. So all of that will be down below. It's definitely something cool. We saw a couple of them at Ragnar Torvus over the weekend and it, it was fun to see. So, uh, if you want information on that down below as with everything else, but let's go ahead and move on to our mod of the week. And we're just going to keep on going on with that Ragnar Oktoberfest theme because this was at Ragnar Oktoberfest and this is Cyprium or Cyprium. I actually haven't asked, but it's made by Tontacles, uh, the creator of the Katanha. And uh, why not make a fully fledged semi-auto HPA build with an integrated body utilizing a Cam ECS-12 and a Centurion for that body. My favorite touch is that nice slurpy scar at the front. Mm. I love Slurpees. Oh, I love Slurpees. But regardless, 
This is an awesome build and something that I uh, loved seeing in person. And there's a whole bunch of details on this and the way that Ton went about creating it and doing the internals that I'm not going to get into and not going to talk too much about because I really want you to go check out the Reddit post that has all the information. If you have questions, ask him on there. Ton is a wealth of information. Be sure to tap into him if you have any questions. Uh, and I know I'm looking forward to seeing this on some high powered games and uh, some competitive fields in the future. So this is just a cool one. I, I love that it's done, that it's out. He's been talking about it for a little while and I've been excited about it. So go take a look at that. And our video of the week, I mean, come on, it can't be anything but something for Ragnar Oktoberfest. And this comes from uh, CLFRCA. I don't know if there's a way to pronounce that or if it's just the letters. My apologies if I did it wrong. But regardless, this is their Stalking Dead gameplay video. And this was a fun video for me to watch. It was cool to see someone else's perspective of the actual gameplay when I was involved in it and in completely different areas at some point to know what was happening all across the field. Because there were three factions all going at it at once. And it was a lot of fun. And I think that fun comes through in this video. Not only that, but they had some very entertaining builds as well. One emulating the Boring Company's uh, flamethrower from Elon Musk, and another just being an exposed dual stage flywheel cage with a grip and a rev trigger, and they just manually hand fed it. And it just, it's, the fun comes through in this one for me. They have very few subscribers, so I definitely think you should go take a look at the video, send them some love, let them know I sent you their way, and uh, give them a sub if you enjoyed it. I love seeing new creators and they only have a couple nerf videos so I really want to push for them to continue to create. We need more people making, making videos and other things in this community because new people have new ideas and do new things and try uh, new ways of making videos. So I really want to impress upon everyone. If you have an idea to make some videos, do it. Go for it, have fun. I really, really want to see more and more people making videos. That means there's more and more for me to share with all of you. So definitely, definitely go for it. Definitely take a look at their video. Like I said, send them some love. Let them know I sent them your way and uh, enjoy the footage. I'm sure we'll be seeing more from Ragnar Oktoberfest over the next coming couple weeks. So uh, I may, I may have to share some more. We'll see. But regardless, Thank you to everyone that watches, that whether you support through subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing, any of that through Patreon. Thank you to each and every one of you. And if there's anything you think I should be sharing on the news here, leave a comment down below or email me. I love hearing from all of you. And with that said, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button and become a part of the community. I'd love to have you. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.